All right, welcome to analyzing relations and functions. We're going to use characteristics of relations and functions to draw conclusions. So the idea here is that I want you to like be able to say, take a situation and be able to study it a little bit cl more closely. Um, that's going to be very crucial for the test. So uh, this is kind of something good. That with the function notation should hopefully be very beneficial for you. All right, so let, let's, oops, let's not do that. Let's do this. Um, Let's look at, say, a data set. Okay, so when I look at a set of points, I'm just calling it a data set. So here I have negative 5, comma 3, negative 2, comma 1, negative, or 1, comma negative 1, and 4, comma negative 3. Now, there's some different ways we can represent this. One way is with a table. And so here's me presenting the table, x, then y. And right now I'm just saying y because I don't know whether or not this is a function. If I knew it was a function, I could say it's f of x. Okay, then we can also do a mapping. Remember, a mapping is just like putting all the x's in one bubble, all the y's in another bubble, and then drawing points to connect the ones that say matched up, like negative five went with three, negative two went with one, negative, or one went with negative one, and four went with negative three. So you can see there, all you do in a mapping is just connect the x's to the y's that they belong to, or the y's to the x's that they belong to, however you want to think of that. Okay, and I can also represent this with a graph. So here's me plotting the points for the graph. All I did there was, you know, say plot 5, negative 3, 2, or I'm sorry, negative 5, 3, negative 2, 1, 1, negative 1, 4, negative 3. Okay, so those are just those points plotted. If you have any questions on those, please make sure to ask me later about that. So now let's start drawing some conclusions from this. What, so let's answer some questions on this. What uh, patterns do you see? Okay, so what patterns do you see there? Well, if you look at the graph, you can see that the points are decreasing. As you go from left to right, they're decreasing. Um, maybe if you looked at it further, you might be able to say, okay, well, it does look like it's kind of linear. Uh, looks like it's going down. Um, maybe it's going linear or like it's going down by the same rate. Uh, I'm not sure. That's something you would have to, say, look at. Um, but that, that there, to me, would be something that you can add on. For now, it's good with the data is decreasing, but start thinking about are there other patterns you might be able to see. Okay, so now let's look. Is it, is this data continuous or discrete? Well, I only gave you this as a set of points. So since I only gave you a set of points and you don't know anything further than that, you have to go with discrete uh, because those are just that the points you were presented. And you, don't, you can't connect these points unless I was telling you to and then say it's continuous. Um, or if, the situ if it was a situation and it tells you to say, you know, that it makes sense to connect the points and then make it continuous. But otherwise, it's just discrete. Otherwise, it's just points. Our next question, is the data a relation? Okay, do you have points? Yes, you do. So the data is a relation. Pretty much everything you get should be a relation. The question that becomes more uh, important is, is it a function? And again, functions are only special types of relations. So let's look at that question. Is this a function? And the answer to that is, did you see the x repeat? No. Does each x have only one y? Yes. So then this is a function. Since each x only has one answer y for it, at least with what we see, or x does not repeat, this is a function. Okay, so kind of go with that. that. That should hopefully help us understand these things. So what's the domain? Well, the domain, again, is the x's. So you tell me all the points that are all the numbers that were x's. Negative 5, negative 2, 1, and 4. What's the range? The range, again, is the y's. So then you tell me all the numbers for the y, which in this case were uh, negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. Now, I just put these in order from least to greatest, but you don't have to. So that, that's something you can't kind of keep in mind. Okay, so let's look at the next part, and let's look at this situation. At a local bowling alley, the cost for bowling is $1.25 per game, 
plus three dollars for the shoe rental. Okay, so what we're going to do here is something similar to what we just did, but this time I'm going to create what's called a four corner model. A four corner model basically tries to divide the situation into four s different things we can look at a table, a function rule, and graph, and then we usually have the situation in an another corner. Uh, I'm actually going to change that to mapping in a minute, but let's go with this. Let's fill in the table first. So we have to decide what's our independent, what's our dependent. Well, if we're talking about, if you go back to the situation, you'll see here that it's $1.25 per game. So this right here will tell me, like after the word per, that's usually kind of an indicator of what I'm working with. Uh, so the games here, it looks like, would be my independent and then the cost would be my dependent. So going back to this, that tells me the games I play are my independent and the cost is my dependent. So if I play zero games, it costs me $3 just to sprint the shoes. If I play one game, it costs me four twenty-five because three plus one twenty-five. Two games, two times one twenty-five plus the three bucks is five fifty. Three games, six seventy-five, so on and so forth. So what is the function rule there? Well, let's look at this. Let's try it like this. f of x equals, and I'm going to put a space, then an x, plus something. Okay. Well, if you look at the situation, it tells you that it was plus $3. So I would have that first. Let's see if I put that first. Yes, I did. Okay. And then how much am I, getting, am I paying per game? 125. Well, that, the per goes to multiplying the x, because we're saying the games are the x, so that's 125 right there. Okay, and then I could do my graph, and notice here I'm putting my games on the bottom, my cost across, or up and down. And then I'm writing down, like, how many games I could play. I'm trying to write the cost, but it's kind of small for me to fit those spaces, so you kind of get the idea, and that's my, um, my games. Okay, so you can see here, that's my graph. Now, like I said, I was going to change that left-hand corner to mapping, so let me change that to mapping. And let's do a mapping. So that way we can say, in this situation, I can represent it with a mapping, a table, a function rule, and a graph. So hopefully I can represent it with all three things, or all four things. And there you can see my mapping. I know it's kind of hard to read, but kind of go with that. OK, so then the question becomes, is this a relation? Is the data set a relation? Well, you got some points. You were able to represent it in, say, a graph and all that. So yes, it is a relation. As long as you can represent some points and find some points, it's a relation. So like I said, almost everything's a relation, or everything should be a relation. So then the next question is, is it a function? Is the data set a function? And the answer to that is, yeah. Because, again, there's only, for every answer, for every x, there is only one answer y. Would it make sense to say, okay, I play three games, and I'm going to get charged uh, $6.75 and $9. You're only getting charged $6.75. That's it. So there's only one answer for each x. Um, and then the next question I want to look at, is the data set discrete or continuous? So this is one of those where you really have to analyze it. Should I be connecting those dots in my graph, or should I leave them just as points? And the, que the answer here is, can you bowl half a game? No. So since you can't bowl half a game, you're going to get charged for a full game every time. So it wouldn't make sense to connect the points, because if you connect the points, you're counting everything between, let's say, 0 and 1, 1 and 2 in games. So in a sense, you could get charged for half a game bowled or a fourth of a game bowled. And that doesn't happen. You get charged for one, two, three, four, five games, whatever. So this is discrete data because it doesn't make sense to connect the lines because you can't bowl half a game. So there's that. Um, now let's look at some more questions. Is the data increasing or decreasing? Well, if you look at the graph, you can tell that it's increasing. Uh, look at the table. As the x gets bigger, is the y getting bigger or smaller, or the f of x? In the case, it's getting bigger also. So everything would suggest that we're going to have an increasing function here. Okay, so we can say from the graph, 
Uh, increasing from the graph as the points move to the right, you can say that you can see the points are also rising, going up. Uh, something that tells me that you can tell that it's increasing from the data, from the table, from the graph, whatever. All right, what's the independent variable? Well, the independent variable is always x, and in this case, that represented the numbers of games played, or um, which represents games played, or games bold. Okay, what is the dependent variable? The dependent variable in this case is f of x, and because I'm basing this off the function rule, and what does that represent? That represents the cost for bowling. So depending on the number of games you play, this represents the cost, how much you would have to pay. Okay, what's the domain? The domain is, again, just the x's. Based on the table, I would say my domain is 0, 1, 2, and 3. Although it could be more, it could be less. What's the range? The range is, again, based on the domain, my range is 3, 425, 550, and 675. Again, getting those numbers from the table or the graph. And finally, let's look at this a little bit more. What does f of 4 equal 8 mean in this situation? Well, to me, what, what does the 4 mean? According to this, the 4 means how many games? You bowl, because that represents the x. The 8 is the answer, which is the, uh, the cost. So then that would tell me for 4 games bowled, the cost is $8. And there you go. Um, this is trying to do some basic analyzing, but again, to make sure you understand and look at. Uh, well, we can even go further into this, talking about like what's rate of change, uh, what's the uh, y-intercept, what does that mean? Those are things we'll look into as we get further along in this with uh, functions. But for now, this is what we're looking at as our analyzations. Uh, if you do have any questions, make sure you ask, because you will have some worksheets where you're going to be going over this. Thank you very much for your time, and I will see you all soon.